Welcome to the lecture series on deep learning in artificial neural networks. This video covers the likelihood of data under a given model. The overall aim is to describe the data set with inputs and outputs, with inputs and targets, by a model and answer the question, what is the probability that this set of P data points could have been generated by my model. Now, we start with a little detour. To make things simpler, we forget for the moment about the labels and just think of the input patterns. So now I have a data set which just has X values, P of these, we have P data points, and we ask what's the probability that these set of data points could have been generated by my model. So here's an example model. This is a Gaussian distribution. You have all seen Gaussian distributions before. The Gaussian has two parameters. One is the center and the other one is the width. And you see that depending on my choice of parameters, I get different curves. The red one is very different from the blue one or from the green one. More generally, it doesn't have to be a Gaussian. We can have some arbitrary function, p of x. And uh, now I ask, well, this is my specific point, xk. So what is the probability that if I draw data points from this distribution, that I would draw a sample with value xk? Now this is not directly p of xk, this is proportional to p of xk because it sort of, the probability needs a multiplication with delta x, with some width delta x. So this p of x, sorry, this p of x here is the probability density and the actual probability depends on my delta x, depends on my resolution delta x. So this was the probability to draw one data point in this region, delta x around xk. And so what's now the probability to generate all p data points? Well, I have to generate the first one. This is p of x1 times delta x. Then I have to generate the second one. That's p of x2 times delta x and so forth and then I have to generate the last one. Now, I can take out these delta x. I have p of these. This gives a term here, and the rest is just a multiplication. So this is a term that depends on my choice of model parameters. For the Gaussian, I said the model parameters are the center and the width of distribution. Now this constant here does not depend on model parameters. It's fixed. It does not depend on the choice of model. So the relevant term really is the first term here, which I call P model of X, where X is now the full set of data points, the full database. So the probability to generate P data points is this probability here. And I call P model of X, the likelihood that the specific set of P data points that are part of this database X is generated by the model. Now, again, this constant C does not depend on the choice of model, but only on the discretization. So let's now suppose that the probability for generating data point XK using my model is proportional to this. Suppose that the data points are generated independently. This is what I used. This allowed me to write this as a multiplication. Then the likelihood that my actual data set could have been generated by my model is just the product of this term. So the independence gives the product. Now, the concept of maximum likelihood 
goes now as follows. We know the likelihood that the model could have generated this set of data point, points, but this likelihood depends on the model parameters, which in our case would be the weights of the network. And now the idea of maximum likelihood is that we choose our parameters such that the likelihood is maximal. The likelihood that my data points could have been generated by my model becomes maximal. Let's look at a little example. So I have a set of data points. It's one dimensional data points that just depend on a position X. And now I make an assumption. I try to explain this set of data points by a Gaussian distribution. So this specific data point here, XK, would now depend on this distribution here. Now my Gaussian have different parameters and here again, four different parameter choices. And now I ask you, which one looks best? Which Gaussian is most consistent with the data? Is it the green curve, the blue curve, the red curve, the brown orange curve? Well, if you look at this for just a moment, you will say, well, the green curve looks best. Okay. Why does the green curve look best? Well, it looks most consistent with the data. It looks like this curve is the one that could have been used to generate this set of data points. So let's look again at this Gaussian. So we have P data points, X1 to XP. This likelihood that the data points could have been generated by our Gaussian, depends on the two parameters. In general, I denote parameters by Ws, but now in this specific case, it depends on the center and the width of the Gaussian. And now let's try to maximize these parameters, the center parameter, the width parameter, so that let's maximize this likelihood P model of X with respect to the model parameters. And if you do that, what comes out is the best choice for the center is actually just to put it in the center of mass of all the data points. So this is a standard example that's discussed in many, many machine learning classes, introductions to statistics, introduction to machine learning. If you choose parameters such that they maximize the likelihood that the data could have been generated by a Gaussian, then this sort of reels a reasonable parameter choice. Note that nowhere in the process I assumed that the data was actually generated by a Gaussian. We just ask, well, what's the best parameters such that the data could have been generated by a Gaussian? So let's look at this definition now of maximum likelihood. The method is you have to choose the parameters such that the likelihood P model is maximal. So you change your parameters so as to maximize this guy here. Now, as little side remark, instead of maximizing this function, you can also maximize logarithm of this. Well, why is that? Because the logarithm is just a monotone function. So suppose I have two different values, y is smaller than y2, then if you go over, well, logarithm of y1 is also smaller than logarithm of y2. So any monotone transform will do the trick. Now taking the logarithm is nice because the product of terms will transform into a sum of terms. So now here is the idea. In maximum likelihood, you have to choose the parameters such that the likelihood here on the left hand side is maximal. And then this is equivalent to maximizing the log likelihood, which is just a sum over the logarithms of all the data points. 
So maximum likelihood inverts maximize the likelihood that the given data could have been generated by your model. Even though, of course, we know that the data points were generated by some process in the real world that might be very different. So it might be a good model, it might be a very bad model, but this is just a method. Once you have chosen a family of models, you try to find the parameters of that family of the model of models such that the likelihood that your data could be explained by the model is maximal. And this is now the summary of the maximum likelihood method. You should choose the parameter such that the likelihood P model is maximal. And you find these parameters by maximizing the log likelihood. And the log likelihood is a simple sum over all the data points logarithm P of XK. Two notes. The first note is that some people use the term likelihood in a more restrictive fashion. They would call only this likelihood. The likelihood is only if you consider the thing as a function of the parameters W, whereas I have also called this here a likelihood. So it's the likelihood of the model parameters in view of the data in this case here. The second note is instead of maximizing the log likelihood, we can also minimize the negative log likelihood. And then this is just a loss function, like a quadratic loss functions, loss function or other loss functions that can be used in artificial neural networks.